Well, my name is uh, Phil Royer, and you're probably wondering why am I up here doing this? And I'm wondering that also. <laughs> so, but what I'm going to try to, to do a little bit, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I started out turning in high school. Uh, my dad had a lathe, and uh, w I did some turning at home. I graduated from high school in 66, so it's been a while. Uh, I turned some when I was in the military in the base hobby shop. Got out of the service, uh, you know, got a job, got married and all that, and uh, had a, a shopsmith for a while, bought a Paramedic 485 and turned for a while. Kind of got interested in other things, more carving and other types of woodworking. Went back to school uh, uh, at night, wasn't too active in turning. And then about 10 years ago, I kind of got back into it, joined the Kansas City Club, joined this club, and uh, uh, have been turning, turning ever since. I like wood turning. I like wood turning better than the turned objects. And I like wood turning tools at least as much or maybe more so than the, uh, the, the actual turning. So it's kind of the same way with wood carving. I'm kind of a collector of wood carving tools and in addition to uh, 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 collecting the tools, I do a little bit of uh, carving. I, when I turn, I turn small things. I think uh, you, some of you may have remembered when I did the, the program on turning tops. I've turned probably 1,000, 1,500 tops. The Kansas City Club uh, uh, donates them to uh, uh, the Ronald McDonald House. But that's the size of thing I like to do. I like to turn the speed way up and turn small items. There's several advantages to small items in that most of my uh, pieces I've turned and left my, unless my wife has them put up somewhere as a, a showpiece, the, the items will uh, fit in a drawer. I've got three or four drawers of tops, little boxes I made. It's not like having a, a whole room full of bowls or something. I'd like to turn bowls. Uh, but the turning part of it would be better than the uh, uh, getting the wood to turn them, and then also what do you do? I'm not much of a, I don't care much for, for selling, so I'd rather just turn the stuff and play with the tools. Okay. <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about here is a little bit uh, uh, about tool handles, kind of, kind of a simple thing, but uh, something I, I've made a lot of tool handles for wood carving tools and also for lathe tools. And then as time permits, I'm going to talk a little bit about sharpening. Uh, not so much on the standard way of sharpening, but how I take the, the, the standard way and use it, the Wolverine jigs and stuff, and move on from there. Uh, the timing on this is I, I was thinking in ter terms of 3.30. The, 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 the 30 is uh, 30 minutes or so or three people nodding off, whichever comes first. <laughs> and uh, uh, I guess the, the main thing I want to emphasize here tonight is I, I, this is all kind of my opinion and my take on what I'm talking about. If tool handles or whatever it is I'm talking about, if you've got a way that works for you and you're happy with it, then don't pay any attention to what I'm saying. Do your thing if it works for you. I've got a few things that maybe people haven't seen before, and it, you know it, it could be helpful. But don't uh, 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 don't feel that just because I'm doing something uh, is it, something you have to do or, or need to do. Do it your way. In fact, what I would recommend for people starting out especially is to buy a, a, a nice set of tools or individual tools to, to make up a set. Use the handles they come, that come with the tools. Learn how to sharpen them and uh, uh, try not to get caught up in the uh, just being one tool away from greatness. And that's how I feel about it. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to break myself of that habit. They, there needs to be a tool... Uh, uh, a 12-step program for tool hoarders <laughs> like me. <laughs> okay, you know why? Why? Why talk about uh, tool handles if you've? Uh, uh, it, it's kind of where your your hands 
interface with the lathe tool and, and, and the, the, the piece of work. If you've, a lot of times I'll get a new tool and I don't care for the handle. This was a Robert Sorby, a real small one quarter inch uh, bowl gouge. I've put it in a different handle and I thought I'd brought the other tool but I, I can't find it here. So I knocked the tool handle off uh, and, and made a smaller handle for it. You, you can see that a quarter inch tool isn't very big and this is a pretty good size handle so it doesn't take that big of a, of a handle for that type of tool. You know, uh, several types of uh, handles you can, you can get. You got the, uh, this is another Sorby handle I knocked off as wood. Here's a, uh, Woodcraft Supply had some of the Carter & Son tools that are real expensive. And they were half price, so I got it and it was still too expensive. And also with this big metal handle here and this quarter inch uh, spindle gouge, I think the, the, the tool handle's too big. It's also pretty heavy. So I uh, uh, made this handle here, and, and it, it's got a little collet that I made that I've tapped and put uh, uh, set screws in, and this is, to me, is just the right size. Uh, what the, the collet is is just a piece of a... Uh, It's kind of a combination collet ferrule. It's a piece of tubing I got down at metal by the foot. I tapped a couple of, drilled and tapped a couple of holes, uh, drilled a hole in the, the wood handle and uh, uh, epoxied it in. And then it, it works as a real good tool handle and I can take it out. Sometimes when the tool gets real short, it's easier to sharpen if you don't have a handle on the end of it. I'll talk about that a little bit when we sharpen. Um, here, here's another similar tool. Here's a, uh, a couple of tools. These are uh, Thompson tools, which are pretty good. He sells handles, uh, but when I bought these two tools, I didn't buy the handles. I just you need to make an adjustment here. Or? Yeah, just hold it. Uh, hold still, huh? <laughs> hold them over your tools there. Okay. See there? Okay. Can you see, go by this. Okay, there we go. Um, so I just found pieces of, uh, uh, of maple, turned the handles, put a ferrule on them, and painted it kind of Kool-Aid color so that it'd be easy to identify. I've made some tools. Uh, th this is a fairly nice figured piece of, uh, um, of maple, but, but also I just sometimes do it about like this, which is just a piece of maple. Uh, I drilled a hole in there and I had a, a tool driven in there and I decided I didn't like it so I pulled it out. But just maple. Find the... Here's a, a, a plumbing fitting I found at the Habit Hat Restore. I, I bought several pounds of these and it's, it's nice real thick brass. I'll cut this end off and I can get a, a ferrule out of this and I also, if I can find a way to hold it, I can use this other, this ribbed in for a ferrule and then turn the ribs off and it makes a nice thick ferrule. Uh, metal by the foot at one time had this brass tubing that's about a, a, a 3 16th or a, no, a 3 30 seconds or a 16 inch thick and I've cut ferrules on out of it and that works real well. Personally, I like the brass better than the copper, but uh, either one works. You can use uh, steel ferrules. I'm not even sure you need a ferrule. I don't put enough pressure on the lathe tools that I've ever had one break on me. The other thing about the, the, the tool handles, like I said, this was pretty heavy for that size of tool. When I made the replacement handle for that tool, this is a problem I have when I'm turning. I spend more time looking for tools than I do turning. But uh, I decided it didn't have enough weight, so I drilled a hole in this end and drove a 3/8 inch rod down to give it a little weight on the end. So it's just 
wh whatever you like. Some people like a lot of weight, other people don't, don't care for, they want a lighter tool. The metal tools are, are a little heavier and they're nice and sturdy, but, but they're cold. I, I don't really like that, that cold feeling. The, the other thing you could do is, and I've not used this on uh, 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 turning tools, but they sell this kind of tape that uh, they wrap your arm up when they take blood and you could wrap this around to give you a grip and kind of take away the, 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 the cold feeling of the tool. One of the things I forgot to mention when I, I started here is this has been a pretty good day for me. Uh, I, I went to the uh, ur urologist this morning and got a clean bill of health and don't have to see him for a year. This afternoon I got a large check in the mail. And do this, if this doesn't turn out real well, I figure two, two out of three is good. <laughs> But not having to go back to the urologist for, for getting a clean bill of health is, uh, has, has been pretty uplifting for me. The, the other thing is I'm trying to figure out, you know, maybe w why I was here. And the main reason I'm here is that Mike had asked me to come do a program, and he wasn't specific on what he wanted. So I said, well, yeah, I can do that. Uh, earlier we were talking about Ron Brown, and he's somebody that uh, sells tools and sends out a monthly newsletter, or a weekly newsletter actually, and he's got a few words of wisdom and inspirational things, and one of his things is, is that when you're asked to do something for your club, you know, if you can do it, you probably should do it. And there's more people that uh, are more qualified than I am, but evidently Mike didn't ask them or he's already asked them, and they've already done it, so... Uh, and that only holds good as far for me as far as doing demonstrations. If if it was being an officer, probably not. <laughs> but it, but it, you know the club really is only as successful as the uh, uh, members and the effort they want to put into it. Some of the more commercial uh, tool handles. This is a, a a handle I made out of a. Uh, a Robert Sorby collet setup. It's um, you, you, you do this, make your handle out of wood, it, it, drill it, and then they've got these collets. The, the, they're machinist collets. So this is a uh, ER25 collet, and it, it goes together like that. They've got All different sizes so you can th this is one for a quarter of an inch is like a half inch so you can use these for different size tools and this is for me is handier than, than having one that uses set screws because if you've got the right size collet in there you just put the tool in and uh, and it, it gets tight pretty quick without a, a lot of pressure they're expensive. Fortunately, they're not as expensive as robust lathes. They're about the, in the same ra range as the, the robust tool rest. Uh, but the, the, the tool rest, I, I've had real good luck with and like them. They make, th this collet here is for, a, 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 or a setup is for an ER25 collet. They also have an ER32. You know, if you're a real man, you need a, a, a tool handle like this. And this is a, uh, this would take, I think, the same one as that one. And the, the bigger collet setups are about $20 more. Uh, I saw this at, at an estate sale. I've been big on estate sales this last year or so, and I've gotten some really, really good stuff. But I went to this one out in Lee Summit. I got uh, two or three robust tool rests. I didn't buy this rest there, but they had a whole bunch of these, and this is... Center, I think is the name of it, AML or something, yeah, uh, advanced lathe tools. This is a uh, like a finial rest. 
that you've got it in there and you can get your hands around the, the finial and hold it as you're, you're trying to turn it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I bought a couple of, of these tool rests also at the estate sale, so keep your eye out for estate sales with lathe tools. This one was about 30% oh, of the cost of just the collet alone. There, I think there was a tool in it, I can't remember, and it's way too big, but I decided I can take it, cut the thing in half, have a, a decent sized tool handle, and use this purple heart as we see you know, from the raffle today, purple heart's in high demand, and I can make something else out of it. But uh, you'd have to have a pretty good size lathe and a pretty good piece to, to need something like that. But, uh, I mentioned those collets, and this is something I, I've really liked using, and I've never seen anybody, it does, isn't a tool handle or sharpening, but it's, it's something I've never seen anybody else here or the other clubs or much on YouTube. It's, it's a collet chuck. This particular one is threaded so that it would fit this lady. They're, they're sold by uh, 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 Penn State sells one with this thread. Uh, Beale makes one with a, an inch eighth and an inch and a quarter, whatever this thread is. Uh, I, I think that Craft Supplies in Utah sells the one. Peachtree also. Peachtree. Several places have have them. The uh, uh, they they come with about six collets. And you can only go so far down and squeeze the, the collet down, but you can buy the in-between sizes for about $20 for a set of eight of them on eBay. So I've, it's, to me, it's one of my uh, favorite tools. I use it almost as much as a scroll chuck. Something else I, I want to talk about real quickly that uh, uh, I, I, people, I, how many of you have the non-powered sanders that you hold up against your bowl as you're, turning the several people make them if you've got one they're great uh, this is a Fordham handpiece I've got uh, goes on a portable flexible shaft it's got good ball bearings in it I put one of the sanders on it so I use it as one of those non-powered power sanders it didn't cost me anything because I had several of them already so that's a good way to, to do that if you have one of these. It's certainly not worth buying one. You can buy one of the Sorby, uh, Ken Rizza, it would turn and wonder sells one. That would be the way to go there but if you have one of these and want to give that a try it works pretty good. So you know your, your bowl is spinning this is spinning around and it sands without leaving the, the scratches as if you were just if it wasn't spinning. It's kind of like a random orbit sander on the lathe. When I uh, make a handle, I usually try to size it up so the, the tool fits in without having to use any glue. I try to do the same way with the ferrules. That's not always, uh, doesn't always happen, so sometimes I'll epoxy the ferrule on. If I have to, I'll epoxy the, the tool in, but I'd rather not epoxy the tool because if I do that, then I've got to split the handle apart to, to, to get it to, uh, to come off if I want to make a change. Another little side note here, I, uh, I wanted one of the great big Allen Lacer uh, uh, skews, but I didn't want to pay $125 for it. Penn State had this uh, 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 big thick round nose scraper. They had a sale and I don't know, for some, somehow I got it for about $28. So I, I ground the, or I cut, the, cut it off at an angle here and then spent about three hours on the grinder slowly putting it, uh, putting an edge on it, rounded the bottom so that it it's moves easy on the tool rest. And I've got something that's at least lets me try out one of the great big skews and see if I like the idea of it. And if I do, and I just got to have one of the Allen Lacer or somebody else's, it uh, give me an idea so I won't waste money other than $28.
Here's a, a, a metal handle um, as is. This one, I, I made this. This was a piece of uh, hex stock that I had. I, I drilled a hole in it, uh, tapped it, and put my, uh, my Sorby spiraling tool on it. It's really kind of overkill for the Sorby spiraling tool, but I've got used to, with this much weight, I can put a lot of uh, pressure into it. Here's a, uh, I don't know, with three quarters, seven eighths inch bar. Stu Shanker, who did a, a program for us, on uh, uh, I think it was a salt salt bowl about six months ago he did a program several years ago for the Kansas City Club about making a metal handle this is a, a, just a piece of metal cold rolled hot rolled I'm not sure I drilled it tapped it got went to Lowe's and found this I don't know whether it's reinforced whatever uh, Stu had said to get and you know made a handle here the one thing about making your own handles out of metal, you almost can buy them as cheap if you have to go down and buy all the parts that metal by the foot or someplace. But if you've got some of the stuff and you like doing stuff like I, I do, it's, it's fun to do. I'll show you some other. Phil, do you have a metal lathe? I, I had a little metal lathe, but I was doing most of the the drilling on a on a shopsmith, and I don't don't have any more. But I think I could do it on a on a, a regular lathe. Oh, yeah. Just put the drill here, and that that if I was uh, doing uh, something round, I could use that collet ch chuck on one end to to turn it. And this something I learned with woodworking. I'd always learned that if you're uh, uh, drilling, you want to drill the big hole first so that the little hole comes in and it's centered from the big hole. Well, metal doesn't work that way, or at least it doesn't for me. I've, uh, I've learned you've got to drill a smaller hole and work up with metal. Also, I've learned that if you're going to do something with taps, don't buy one tap, buy several. <laughs> or that's at least with me, because I always break them. Uh, th this is a, a handle made by Simple Lathe Tools. I bought this from Bill Sapp's uh, a sale he was selling here. It was a tool. It was a carbide. And I, I don't have the screws in, but this gives you an idea of what one type of commercial metal handle. Here's the, 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 the Sorby uh, Sovereign. I bought uh, a set at Woodcraft of the spiraling tools from, from Woodcraft at 50% off because I wanted the uh, spiraling tools. I, I was using a lot of them. Uh, it came with this handle. I've used it some, but it, it does work. This is, it's got different size, uh, so you can put different tools in it. It would go up to 5 8 or down to 3 8 Here's a, uh, I bought a, somewhere else, I got a a larger setup of the the Sorby. It comes with a side handle. You've got different collets that go into it. And you also put the two of them together, and you you, you approach the the size of that other tool I was showing you earlier. So uh -huh. you can you know if you're really you, you got a big band size project, you get a good grip on it. Then the, this mostly is stuff I certainly wouldn't buy. Uh, uh, at, at full price, but if you know if it's something you see out there, I mean it's all the Sorby stuff is real good. The simple tools is good. I bought a hollowing setup several years ago, and this is I, I think is Sorby, but it comes with this machine gun type handle, uh, so you can get inside there and keep a good grip on it. Here's a um, Thompson handle. I'd, I'd ordered some uh, uh, one quarter inch blanks of his steel, and what he sent me instead were t uh, quarter inch handles. So I ca called him, finally got a hold of him, and he, he, he said, well, just keep those, and uh, he, he then sent me the, the I, I, this was just a round piece. I made a pointing, pointed, pointed tool, and uh, a round skew with it, and I can use it on the on this handle or some others. But the 
the Thompson handles are good. They're pretty pricey. I think this was forty dollars. I don't think I would have paid that. When I got it for free, it was fine. We're approaching our our time limit here, but I'll do just a little bit about sharpening. Um, we were talking earlier with uh, uh, the people who were up here during the break about the CBN wheels versus the, um, the aluminum oxide. I, I like both of them. I think there's a, a, a place for both of them, especially since I do a lot of sharpening of wood carving tools. I want to, I, I, I don't think it's a problem, but I don't normally put anything but high speed steel on the, the CBN wheel. And also, I think there's some other places where the uh, 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 aluminum oxide is at least as good or better. On the, here's the, the, the this tool rest that comes with the uh, uh, um, one way one way Wolverine system. The, the the club has the base for the Wolverine system, and these are some uh, attachments that go with it. This piece here is normally about this long. I was having a problem with it and I had junk set behind the grinder and I could, every time I'd push this in, I would uh, 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 run into stuff. So I, I had two of them since I'd bought an extra setup, so I just cut this one off. I said it was much easier to, to deal with. Something else they can use for the the very grind system. This is the the very grind. I, I imagine probably have about 75% of the people have one of these. Uh, if you don't want to use that, I just took a piece of uh, three quarter inch square stock, uh, cut it down at an angle, flattened it out. Uh, this fits in here just like the, it would into the other piece. Now when I made this, there was some reason why I wanted to do this and not use the other piece. Right now I can't tell you what it is, but at that time it was a good idea. <laughs> but you know, you, you put these in. Um, and this you know, would be a, a, a program or two uh, on its own on how to use a Wolverine system, all the fine points, but I just kind of want to touch base and then show you where I deviate a little bit. But you uh, put this in here, move the, the, the thing at the bottom back and forth until you get the correct angle, and uh, then just do a little sharpening. <laughs> The thing I, I like about the Wolverine and the Bear Grind, it's pretty easy to use, it's pretty foolproof. You, you get a, a, a nice clean uh, a fa a faceted edge that looks like a, you know, a, di a, a, a gemstone. It, it takes a little longer to set up than, than, than I like. This is uh, Doug Thompson's, uh, uh, talks about Thompson lathe tools, the different angles. He uses 60 degree for bowl gouges, 40 degrees for spindle gouges, 40 for detail gouges, scrapers 20 degrees, and skews 40 degrees. But that's, that's just him. But he does give you a setup on how to, let's see if I get it set right. You can download this off his website, or if you order something from him, he sends you a hard copy of it. But it it it, it gives you where to put this lever here, and I've I've set it up according to that. I'm sure you can't see it, but I've scribed a line there so I can go back directly to that and get it. And I've got another one of these at home where I've took the wing nut off. Just put a, a nut, tighten it to the correct place so it can't get out of adjustment. I also do that.
on the platforms. I've got this one set up for 40 or 45 degrees. I put a nut on there. And so rather than having to put it in, in the grinder, in the, the jig holder, mess with it every time, I just have it set up and I, I use one of them for uh, skews and uh, beading tools and the such, and they use the other one for uh, uh, gouges. And I use, I use the platform for gouges because I saw several people do it on YouTube, a couple of gurus, Stuart Batty, uh, Mike Mahoney are talking about hand sharpening. They talk about a 40-40 grind. Uh, person, I'm more into a 39 and a half, 41 and three quarters <laughs> grind. I don't think it makes that much difference. But uh, uh, so put, put this in. To uh, worry about the the angle, and I'm ready to go. And I let's see, is this? I think that's for the for the skews. <coughs> yeah, but this this is I just. <laughs> Probably should have put the sharpie on there so you could see, but I'm getting a, a slightly different angle than, than I got with the same uh, uh, locked-in platform at home. And this is because of variations in uh, the the way the the grinder set up, and it really it it looks like a lot of difference, but I'll bet there's not a half a degree difference there, going from one grinder to the other or from one end of the. Uh, uh, so anyway, that's, that's what I like to do, is just lock it in and then use it that way. Something else I did is uh, one of these gurus had a, um, a, a, an auxiliary platform with a hole in the, uh, in the platform so it would go up against the uh, uh, wheel a little farther. So I uh, took a piece of... Uh, steel I got down at metal by the foot, double stuck tape it to the, the original platform. So I've got a, a bigger platform. I, I haven't got this one locked in, but... It, it's, it, it's, a, it's a different slightly different than, than my grinder at home, but you can see if you, you're set up correctly, you can get in and have uh, some support on both sides of the, the wings. Also have different size uh, platforms. This is a small one that they sell. I'll just assume that's a correct angle. And That doesn't look as good as the uh, uh, what you get off the one way, but it does give you a uh, it, it, it's quick. Also, sometimes the, the tool gets worn down so far that you don't have room to fit it into the very grind. Is another reason to do it by hand. Also, we'll wrap it up here. Do a, a little bit of honing by hand. There's a, this is kind of controversial as to whether this does any good or not. 
The one argument is that the lathe is turning so fast that it's only about five seconds before your honed edge is gone, but, but I still like to do it, especially on the inside of gouges. They all have uh, some manufacturing marks in them that I, I think leaves uh, kind of a, a, a rough edge, and if you take the, the hone and you know work those out of it, it helps it out. Well, I could talk another few minutes, but I think it's getting late and it's time to uh, to move on here. Good job. Anybody got quick questions or come up and ask me later? And if not, I'll just go ahead and shut up. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.